All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, welcome back to Pennsylvania. Bear with me here. We're going to do this video uh, like we do all of our videos here. One take, no preparation, and all from memory. Uh, so we'll see how this voiceover goes. Um, all right, uh, today's video is kind of a, uh, a viewer requested video. Uh, I get comments uh, from time to time from people that uh, want me to do a video on farm finances and what you can expect uh, beginning farmers. Um, <coughs> how financing is excuse me <coughs> how financing is for uh, beginning farmers um, that's very hard for me to to do that's very hard for me to make a video on uh, just because the there's too many variables uh, with agriculture and uh, each individual farm is so different from the next farm uh, my neighbor's farm is right next to mine and we both face totally different uh, financial uh, challenges financial hurdles um, and imagine just from one neighbor to another now amplify that across the entire country uh, markets are different uh, prices are different um, but what I can do, uh, I got an idea for this video a while ago, and I kind of forgot about it. I forgot all about it uh, until just uh, a couple days ago. Um, I listened to uh, Dave Ramsey. He is a uh, he has a radio show. He's a financial. Uh, a financial guy uh, a lot of you guys know him uh, he is here on YouTube um, check him out it's worth every <laughs> every second um, Dave's plan uh, is the uh, he has a seven the seven baby steps um, and following these steps I really believe that you cannot uh, go wrong uh, if you're following these steps but I want to kind of tie how these seven steps that he has tie into agriculture and a farm business uh, for me as a well this will be my fifth year now so I don't know if I, I guess I'm still a beginning farmer um, I'll just use that term beginning farmer as uh, I had started this business in 20. 17. Um, I had absolutely nothing when I started. I didn't even have a grease gun to grease my equipment that I still didn't own. Uh, nothing. Uh, what you see is <laughs> was all started here in 2019. Um, so getting back with uh, Dave Ramsey, um, I, I was listening to his radio show. He also has a radio show. A lot of you guys know that. If you don't know Dave, I really suggest you check it out like I had said before. Um, so I was listening to his radio show and a farmer called in and it's it's every once in a while you'll have some uh, somebody from agriculture call in and look for financial advice and just listening to this poor guy I mean he was in such a financial mess I can't even remember the details uh, on it but uh, debt was one of the biggest uh, issues that this guy was facing and it just was going to be impossible for this guy to get ahead um, so it made me think there's not uh, a lot of uh, subject matter on agriculture and how these seven baby steps can be applied to somebody in agriculture. I, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that would probably argue and say uh, debt is a good thing in agriculture. You should you should leverage that debt. You can use debt in so many ways to make yourself successful in agriculture. Well, you could make that argument, I guess, with any type of business, not just agriculture. But I, I'm not going to go outside of that circle. Um, <laughs> I try to focus on my situation specifically, what I do here on a small scale as a uh, a startup business, startup farm operation. I'm just going to keep it uh, inside that circle of how I do things. I'm not gonna not gonna speak to how others might try to do them. Um, but the best way I'm going to be able to do this is giving you guys an overview on my story with uh, debt and uh, working these seven baby steps. Um, as of right now, I'm on step four, five, and six uh, in the baby steps, and uh, I will uh, just give you guys a quick overview. Okay, the year is 2014. 2014, I am working, living paycheck to paycheck. I am deeply in debt. Um, I <laughs> just not, not doing well financially and just tired of it. I just fed up with it. Um, I had read Dave's book, The Total Money Makeover, and I decided it was time to end this life. Uh, this is not a good life. This is not a winning strategy. This is not how I'm going to be successful. So in 2014, I started baby step one. Baby step one, you guys will know, is to save $1,000. Now, this $1,000 is your emergency fund. Uh, this is going to be money that you use when things go bad. And for me, things had gone bad many times. But this $1,000 was very empowering for a guy that's living paycheck to paycheck. 
Um, if something goes wrong, you do not turn to credit or credit cards. You pay with your $1,000. And it makes you feel like you have some security and you're ready to start this. Uh, you're ready to take on baby step two, which is one of the harder steps. It requires a lot of intensity, uh, as Dave calls it, gazelle intensity. You have to focus to be able to complete step two. And step two is challenging and it takes time and you do some crazy things financially to try to get out of debt, uh, which I have done. I mean, I've sold a lot of things that uh, uh, to try to make step two work. So step two is to list all of your debts from smallest to largest. I did that. I took out a notebook. I listed all my debts, smallest to largest. And I could not believe how fast I was able to get rid of some of these debts that I have had for years and years and years just by paying on the little ones. Once the little ones are paid off, you have more money freed up in your budget to start paying on the next level and the next level. And you work yourself through these steps that by the year 2016, it did take me from 2014 to 2016, but I was completely debt-free in the fall of 2016. I did not owe anybody anything, and it felt great. It felt like I had achieved something, I've done something, and I was ready to start working on step three. So what happened? How did I get started uh, in 2017? Uh, to start this uh, small farm operation? Well, the first key to the success definitely was being out of debt to start with. I, w I went into this with no debt. However, I relapsed. <laughs> and I'm going to call this a financial relapse. And uh, when I was uh, first given the opportunity to uh, start this business and to start farming, I sat down and I worked out all the numbers of how much it was going to cost me to be self-sufficient and to do everything myself as as a operator of a farm from start to finish in crop production uh, with all the equipment I would need. And the number came out to well over six figures. I mean, you, you were talking a lot of money to be able to do this uh, and be self-sufficient. And I realized this was not going to work. I could not take on debt like that um, for the size of the operation. It just was not doable. And that's what a lot of people face, I think, with uh, beginning farmers is looking at that beginning number of what you need to get started. Um, I did not want to let that number intimidate me, and I was able to... Uh, 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 bring about the situation now that I am in. Uh, you see the combine right there. That is not mine. Um, the guys that I work with that do my planting and harvesting is one of the main reasons why I was able to start this business. Um, uh, with uh, with your finances, you're not going to be able to afford the best and the latest and greatest when you're starting out. And it takes many years to achieve that level of, uh, of self-sufficiency. So in 2017, I relapsed and I took out a starter loan. And um, it did not feel good once again being in debt, uh, making payments, uh, being uh, somebody that has to pay uh, interest once again. And 2017 was a pretty good year and I still felt confident even though I took on debt. And when it became, once again, felt like, it, it once again felt like 2014 when I was fed up and tired of this in 2018. A lot of my longtime viewers will remember 2018 was a terrible year for me. Um, I did, I had three, four months worth of money left after harvest and that was not good. Um, I decided that I was going to go back to work and uh, make up for the loss, and we've done that. Um, so from 20, uh, 2018, 2019, um, my loan that I had taken out, and again, uh, if I could do it again, I would not have done that because it would was not necessary. Um, knowing what I know now, I could have started from the start debt-free just by buying some basic equipment, what I'm trying to get back to right now. Um, so it was a seven-year loan, and I managed to pay this seven-year loan off in three years and uh, was once again debt-free, and it felt amazing once again. Um, so like I said, I know there's there's other farms that uh, don't think twice about uh, signing for loans and stuff. That's I can only speak for myself. Um, so uh, what is baby step three? Baby step three is to save three to six months worth of expenses. This is going to be your complete, fully funded emergency fund. Um, I saved more than six months because 
it seemed like my emergencies were big emergencies. Um, I was somebody that was laid off twice already in my working career. Uh, companies that had said, large companies that had said, oh, well, we've never laid anybody off in the 100 years we're in business. Well, guess what? <laughs> I was the group after 100 years that they decided to uh, lay off and move to another state. Um, things like that. So it, it kind of has me cautious. Uh, I Even to this day, I have very little trust in uh, business <laughs> or uh, an employee lawyer but anyway um so that's step three step four um then is to save 15 percent of your uh, income into retirement account i've had some old time farmers uh, tell me that farmers don't save for retirement um which is is the case a lot of times a lot of times the the next generation is looking to buy in and uh, kind of take care of mom and dad into the into the golden years um, the reality of agriculture is a lot of farmers don't retire up until 70, 80, and even into their 90s. They're still working on the farm. Um, I am in a different situation here as a beginning farmer. I do not own any land. I do not uh, have large assets that are... Uh, <laughs> I don't have sheds full of brand new equipment that's going to be worth money at an auction someday. Um so I do save 15% of my income in a retirement account. Uh, compound interest is too powerful to, uh, to overlook uh, working these steps. Uh, step five is to save for your kids' college funding. College is very expensive and it only keeps getting more expensive. And uh, having your kids saddled with uh, student loan debts uh, when they're just starting out in life is not a recipe for success, I don't think. It's just not, uh, it's not good. <laughs> so then... Uh, step uh, six is to pay off your mortgage. Now, this is kind of the step I'm using to uh, save uh, down payment money for a farm. Um, there's going to come a day, and I don't know when that is, um, that I'm not going to probably not going to be able to be a renter anymore. I'm going to have to purchase something if I want to continue. I don't know what the future looks like. Many of us do not. Um, I'm just going by from lease to lease at this point. But there's going to come a time when I'm going to have to buy something, either a farm or a house or something. So I want to make sure I have a down payment, uh, the full 20%, if not more. Um, if I could pay uh, a lot more towards a, a piece of property or even a house, that, that's going to be what I want to do. So step seven, of course, is the, the pinnacle of this the, the seven steps. That's the step everybody uh, should aspire to get to. It is the uh, build wealth and give, uh, to be generous with what you have been blessed with. And uh, honestly, I can't wait to get to that step, um, to build wealth and uh, to be able to be generous with everything. So um, now, as far as agriculture, like I said, this is... Uh, how I am operating and how I run my finances, both my personal finances and the finances for the farm. Um, now, I know that not everybody's going to be in the same situation as I am in. Uh, once again, like I said, I, I have a lot of things that other people probably do not have to pay uh, as a renter. Um, being that I have somebody hired to plant and to harvest, I don't have all of the uh, expenses that some of you, you people <laughs> you other farmers would have. Um, it, it's just too difficult for me to do a video on individual finances. So anyway, guys, I hope this helped. I will link a uh, link down for uh, in the description for Dave Ramsey's book, A Total Money Makeover. It is a great read. It's kind of what got me started. I'm not making any money on this. I just want to uh, try to help uh, people that are thinking of starting or beginning like I did. So once again, thank you guys for watching.